Hey, hello everyone. This is Mike with Healing Journeys today. Thank you so much for joining me. Appreciate your heart to do so. And uh, hey, before we get into the word, just got a few announcements for you. Uh, one is we have uh, the guest teachers for the month. I believe it's Dave and uh, Karen Metcalf. Uh, you might want to check them out. And then also, uh, yeah, that's it for that. And then uh, I have uh, a couple of speaking engagements coming up. If you're in the Muskegon, Wisconsin area, Michigan, Michigan thank you. Muskegon, Michigan area. I hope that's, uh, I booked the right flights <laughs> for that one. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to be there. Uh, you can check that out. That's in uh, Michigan. And uh, you can go to my website right there on my on the screen there. You'll see that website. And um, you can go there and it'll give you uh, directions and uh, times and all the details there. Also, uh, you'll see on my website too that this month, instead of the third Friday of the month, I'll be doing um, tomorrow because I'll be out of town on the third Friday. So tomorrow... Um, evening, 7 p.m. Mountain Time, I do a, uh, a Bible study or a Bible class or a truth class, whatever you want to call it. It's an informal meeting where we get together and just uh, sh I share things, not specifically on healing, but just whatever God puts on my heart. And that's open to uh, anyone who wants to join by Zoom. And the Zoom link is generally on their, you know, Thursday afternoon, Friday morning, somewhere, I uh, get it up for you for that evening. And please, you're welcome to join that. If you'd like, we do have limited uh, space. I don't know, you know, 200, I think, or something we can have. So anyway, um, and if you do join, uh, you know, and it's, uh, you know, just, you know, say hello, let us know who you are. Uh, we'd love to uh, meet you and and oftentimes at the end of that uh, time, I do questions and answers. So, and I, you know, if it, it, on topic, off topic. So, yep. So mainly it's just a time of fellowship and we're just trying to become more familiar with our father and his heart for us and, uh, you know, recognizing what he's speaking to us. So that's why we're you know, spend time in the Word together. So you're welcome to join me, and I'd love for you to do so. And let's see, I think that's it for the announcements in, uh, let's see, there is one more place I'll be going this month. That is, actually, it's the first April Fool's Day. How appropriate. <laughs> I'll be speaking at uh, Karis uh, Bible College in Minneapolis, and again, that information is on the website. And I'll also be able to, uh, the, on the second, uh, I'll be sharing at a church there in uh, Minnesota, Minneapolis area. And uh, I can't remember the name, River something. Um, yeah. So anyway, yep. And then uh, there's a few other events in April, and I'll put those up after I've completed these first two. So. Anyway, thanks again for joining, uh, joining me. Uh, again, my name is Mike Hesch. I am with Healing Journeys today. And the topic that we are going to look into today is called the most accessible way to receive healing. How do you like that? The most accessible way to receive healing. Wow. Uh, that is such an important thing that we're going to hear today. You know, I don't know about, uh, about you, but I know that when I was going through my healing journey, one reason it lasted for so long was I lacked understanding of the word. It's not that I didn't know the word, it's I lacked understanding of the word. Um, let me give you an example of this. Um, I read this testimony years ago, and it just kind of stuck with me because it really spoke to my heart. And uh, it's by a minister who's, you know, he's been all around the world, probably seen more miracles than uh, any modern day uh, minister he combined. 
he has just uh, uh, just been an, a blessing to me. But anyway, he shares his testimony about how a man came to him that had been deaf in one ear for 20 years. And uh, so he, he came to the minister and he said, hey, look, he said, uh, he said, you know, w uh, can you heal my ear? Uh, no, I, no, this is what he said. He said, can my ear be healed? And, um, and the minister had replied and said, if you can believe, yes, your ear will be healed. And the man said, replied kind of in a disgusted way. He said, yeah, that's what they've all told me. He said, I've been to the, the most famous healing ministers in the last 20 years, and none of them's been able to help me. And again, the minister said, well, if you can believe, uh, you can be healed. And the man said, um, you know, and the man wasn't content with that. And so he asked him this question. The minister said, do you think God wants to heal someone like you? And the guy paused for a moment and he said, you know, he said, I know that it's uh, whatever his will is, he will do. But he said, as far as healing me, he said, I don't, I don't really know that. And then the minister replied and he said, that's the reason that you haven't received healing is you don't know what God's will is for you. And uh, so he asked the man this question. He said, hey, he said, do you believe that God will uh, keep his promise? And the man said, most certainly God is, God is faithful to do and to keep all of his promises. And so the minister said, so if I minister to you and share with you what God's will is for you today, then you'll believe and receive your healing. And the man said, well, I guess. He said, yeah, I, I guess so. And so uh, the minister went on to share with him some very familiar scriptures to us. And, uh, and you know, healing scriptures. And the man said, uh, you know, he, he, the minister asked the man, he said, do you think that they, those scriptures include you? And the man paused for a moment and he said, you know, I've never seen it like this before. He said, I do believe that it's God's will for me to be healed. I do believe that I'm included in those scriptures. And the minister said, before he even touched the guy's ear, uh, his ears, oh, his ear opened up and he could hear as well with the one ear as he could with the other. Okay. Now, this, this testimony I love because it highlights the, the point that we're going to be talking about. See, this man had seen other people healed. This man had heard of other people being healed through other ministers. And he came in hopes of them uh, affecting a change in his ear. Like, you know, maybe they would touch his ear and he would be healed but he had no certainty in his heart that that was actually God's will for him. So the only, uh, the only thing that he had steadfastness or surety about was whether he could hear or not hear. So the only way he had to evaluate whether or not it was God's will was after they prayed for him, whether he noticed a change or not. Now, folks, you and I both know that uh, that is an unreliable way, uh, probably the most unreliable way to discern whether God's working in your life or not. And so he walked away for 20 years from all these famous ministers, not ever having received anything. Now, they all told him the same thing. They all said, if you will believe or according to your faith and... Uh, and he thought that he had faith, but he had nothing. No, if you, the only way to have faith is to have a promise. See, faith is steadfastness on something that someone has said or knowledge of any kind. Okay. I use this example often because it's a simple example is that anyone that's learned how to drive, they grow in confidence on they grow in confidence through the use of the brake pedal. So over time, 
uh, they, their faith increases, and it can be quite rapidly, but it takes time. As they experiment with the brake pedal, they know that it will stop their car. No matter how fast they're going, it will eventually stop their car if they apply pressure to it. And so over time, because you have that knowledge that the brake is designed to stop the car, whenever you're in a situation where you need to stop the car, you place your confidence in that knowledge you have, we'll call that faith, and you, you act on that faith that you have, that the brake pedal is going to stop the car, you apply the pressure, and the car stops. So you've exercised your faith in the knowledge that you had. If you had no knowledge and you were driving a car for the very first time and you needed to stop, you may press on the accelerator, okay? You may just do a, a, a Fred Flintstone and try and put your feet down on the ground and drag the car to a stop, you know? Or you might change the gear, or put in, you might try everything else, but until you have knowledge about the purpose of the brake pedal, you can't place any confidence in it. Now, here's another thing too. Let's say you're, ta you're taught from a textbook all about the brake pedal and its ability to stop the car. But yet, if you don't apply that, that knowledge with confidence, you may not apply enough pressure to stop the car. In other words, let's say you just touch the brake pedal a little bit and it doesn't seem to do anything. So if you don't have that, if you're not steadfast on the knowledge about what you gain, that that brake pedal will stop the car, then you might try it a little bit. And if it doesn't do anything, you might start trying something else. But if you have, if you're persuaded, in other words, you have faith that that's the only way to stop the car, then that's what you'll do. You'll keep pushing on that pedal till the car stops. And that's you're exercising your faith. Now, this man that we just talked about for 20 years, he had known that God is able to heal, but he didn't know that God would heal him, okay? So even though he had knowledge of something, he didn't apply it to himself. Why didn't he? Because he didn't know what the Word said specifically about him, okay? And that's an important point to make. Now, the last two uh, lessons that I taught, I, I taught on, um, uh, is your prayer a prayer of faith, hope, or fear? Okay, that's what I taught on. And always when I teach on prayer of any kind uh, concerning healing, people automatically say, uh, you know, well, you don't need to have faith to be healed. Uh, ministers pray for people all the time, and they don't have any faith, and uh, they get healed. And we hear testimonies, I'm thinking of, you know, a handful of people that are very popular and very well known in the healing, uh, what would you say, healing circles of the church that are very well known. And they even testify, oh, you don't need to believe, I'll believe for you. It's my faith that will heal you. And, you know, folks, uh, even they will tell you, they don't ever show you the videos where their faith doesn't heal the other person. See, they don't have any videos on that. The only videos they show are the ones where they're seeing the results that they think they're getting through their faith. Now, you know, we don't have all the answers, but the Word of God does. So when you go to the Word, that will answer every single question that pertains unto life and godliness. And it's very simple, too. I'm going to expand on that simple point in a moment. But think about it. You know, all of these ministers that do communicate that, oh, like, oh, I met this person. Uh, they said they were an atheist, that they were an atheist. And uh, I noticed that they were having trouble with their knee. And I said, you know, Jesus wants to heal that. And then I actually saw this testimony. And that's what I'm relating to it. And they said, oh, I don't believe in God. I'm an atheist. And, uh, and the minister began to share with them that, you know, Jesus loves them and Jesus, Jesus wants their need to be well and whole. And uh, that's why uh, he went to the cross. That's why he rose again so that we could not only just have life with him, you know, in heaven, but we could have life here on earth that it could affect 
even our physical body. And, uh, you know, the man went on to say, okay, well, you know, if you, you know, I'll give it a shot, go ahead. And so uh, the minister laid hands on him and then he said, well, try it now, walk around, you know, and he said, go ahead, walk around. So the guy began to walk around and, and you could tell that he noticed a difference. You know, you could see the look on his face like, wow, he wasn't limping anymore either. He said, wow, it, it is healed. And, uh, you know, he was very happy about that. And so the minister went on to share the story that this guy was an atheist and uh, he didn't know the Lord. And, uh, you know, it was the faith of this minister that caused him to receive healing. But here's one thing that they don't communicate and that none of us really know, but we can tell by what the scriptures say. You know, the word of God says in Hebrews 4, verse 12, that the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It divides asunder the, the, the spirit and soul and uh, the, the joints and marrow, okay? The physical from the spiritual. You can divide and see what is of the flesh and what is of the spirit. And it goes on to say, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So if we would look at that testimony in reverse and say, why is it that that person who proclaimed to be a, an unbeliever, who proclaimed to be an atheist, actually received healing and appeared to not be in belief of any kind, okay? This is where it's very important to understand what the Word of God is, okay? You know, it says in, uh, uh, let's turn, turn there with me. Go to uh, Mark chapter 16. You know, I read these verses for many years, and uh, I didn't really, really didn't understand the application that I understand now. And I think it's so important that we do understand that. You know, it says right here, it, it talks about, Jesus said, go into... I'm in verse 15 of Mark 16. And Jesus said unto them, Go you into all the world and heal every creature. No, he didn't say that. What did he say? He said, Go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. He that uh, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Do you see what he says? He says, look, if you will preach the gospel and people will believe the gospel, then these signs will follow those that believe. What will they see? They, it says, in my name, they'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Notice these are all things that follow those that believe the gospel, okay? Now listen to this. It says here in verse 20, uh, verse 19, it says, And so, so then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they, those to whom he was speaking, went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with, the word them was added, so I'm not going to read that. The Lord working with and confirming the word with signs following. Wow. See, it's the word that is believed that allows those signs to follow. Okay, let's go back to that testimony about that uh, modern day minister, the video that I saw about the man and the, his knee, and he professed to be an atheist and, and didn't believe in God. Do you know, here's what we don't know about that man that's not shared in that testimony. Was that man who was professing not to believe in God or not being an atheist, I would guess that that man was in his early 20s maybe 22, 23, something like that, okay? Now, we don't know 
it's not said, but we can we can uh, look at the scriptures and evaluate that way. Do you know that that young man may have been saved as a young person? He may have called upon the Lord as a younger person and received Jesus Christ as his Savior, which meant that the Spirit of Christ was dwelling in him. You know, the Bible says, and I've taught on this before, uh, I have a teaching called uh, Forever Secure. You can go there and listen to it. That um, once you're born again, we're sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. There's many other scriptures. I'm not going to go into it now. But see, that man, if he had received Christ as his Savior, would have been sealed by the Spirit. And that means that the Spirit was dwelling in him. And the Bible says in Romans 8, verse 11, that the same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in every born-again believer. Anyone who's called on the name of the Lord Jesus has his Spirit dwelling in them. Whether they're living in sin up to their eyeballs, or whether they're living up to it in their chin, or whether they just you know, tiptoe through it, it doesn't matter. They still have the Spirit of God in them because... The Bible says that they are born of God, born of an incorruptible seed, okay? So whether they acknowledge what they knew at one time or not makes no difference. Consider this. How many people, young people, do you know that are raised in the Lord, homeschooled and everything? They go away to these liberal universities in order to pursue a degree and uh, the enemy takes the seed that was sown into them and robs it away from them. And what happens? Well, they say, well, I don't believe in God anymore. Okay. And if they profess that long enough and they're accepted by so many people, they don't, they don't even acknowledge knowing God. And here's why. Because among their peers, they would be ridiculed or persecuted for the word's sake. So many of them find it easier just to say, oh, I don't believe in God. I'm just like all my other friends, instead of standing out, okay? So back to that testimony again about the man with the knee. So we don't know, and I would say if we were to look at the testimony in reverse and interpret from the word of God, that man believed either in that moment or he... Uh, or he had believed as a young person, and deep down in his heart, he desired, he desired to receive healing and wanted to believe for it, but because of his friends around him uh, that he was with, he had to put on this show for them. So in that scenario, we can say that the, the man leaned on the faith that this the minister had in speaking to him, and through that simple act of his belief. Remember, the word of God preached doesn't have to be, you know, a 25-minute sermon or an hour and a half lecture. It can just be something simple as this. You know, God wants you well. All a person has to do is accept that in their heart. It doesn't say they have to understand it with their mind. In fact, none of us can understand it with our natural mind. It's impossible. That's what the Word says. It's impossible. So all a person needs to do is accept what the simplest gospel message, which is Jesus wants you well. Jesus died so you could have health. See, that's how simple it is. And that man just said, sure. I, I believe. He didn't use the words, I believe. He just said, okay, let's give it a shot. Okay? Now, that childlike faith produced what? Action. See, when the man prayed for him, he could have just walked away and said, that doesn't work. But he didn't. Something in his heart allowed him to move forward. And what was that? Well, the Bible calls that belief. Just that simple little mustard seed of faith caused him to receive what God's will was for him. This man who ministered to him was just expressing in very simple terms the gospel. He preached the gospel to him. God wants you well. He didn't use those words, but he said, you know, Jesus doesn't want you hurting. He doesn't want your knee in pain. He took that pain so you could walk free. Okay? 
Now, the man just accepted that. What we don't know, what we can't qualify or quantify, uh, is what he was really believing in his heart. Stop for a second. How many of us, let, I'm going to look at this in reverse, and I'm guilty, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the top of the list here. How many of us has been in a prayer line or been in a service, and, the, and the, we have an issue in our body, and the minister's standing on the stage, and they're calling out things? And, uh, and they say, you know, oh, you know, if you, you know, if you have this condition, the Lord is healing you right now. And we're like, okay, I have that condition. And, uh, okay, yes, I received that. I received that. Yes, I received that. And then what's the next thing we do? Well, the minister says, try and move what you couldn't move before. Try and do what you couldn't do before. Okay. If you can do it in the public layer. And so, they, uh, so you try it and, you know, uh, someone sees you moving your arm, like let's say your shoulder was bothering you and they see you moving the arm and they say, did you receive healing? And what do you say? Oh yeah, it's, it's, oh yes, I'm healed. And you know, you still feel the pain and then you're, but you're like, no, no, I shouldn't confess the pain. And then, you know, a few days later, you, you know, all the pain is there again. Okay. How many of us said all those things? Yes, I can see your hands. We've all done that. We've all, we've all not accepted with childlike faith what is being said. We have hoped that what they're saying is going to work for us, but what's the basis of our evaluation? Is it what the Word of God says, or is it what we feel in our arm? or your leg, or your toe, or wherever it is that you were aching, or had a problem, okay? See, that's where we're limited. And what was very readily accessible to us, simply believing what the Word of God says, we lay aside. And what do we choose instead? Well, here's what we put our confidence in. We put our confidence in the minister who had just shared about all these people that, that at their last minister, uh, their last uh, time they ministered, uh, they called out this, this, and this, and all these people got well. So right away, we're putting our confidence in, hey, God hears that person, okay? And so what are we doing? We're saying, well, if they heard that, you know, and your mind goes to what you know. Stop a second. Your mind goes to what you know. And what does your mind know? Well, it's a reason. It's reasoning more than it is faith in this sect. Well, if God healed that person through them just calling it out on the stage, and I'm here, well, he'll heal me too. And again, uh, the basis of their evaluation is going to be the effect. Did it have an effect on my arm? Did it have an effect on my hand? Do they still hurt? Do, can I move them? You know, that's their basis of evaluation. Now, I want to go back to the first testimony I shared. Now, this man, when he heard what the Word said, moved his attention away from the symptom to what the Word of God actually said. And he knew that the Word of God included him. Now, for 20 years, he had done it the other way. He was waiting for the physical change. And if he saw the physical change, then in his mind and heart, he would know that that word was true. But he turned it around the other way, like the scriptures say here that we just read, that the signs follow the word that is believed. That's how it works. Even when Jesus sent the disciples forth at the very beginning, I'm thinking of Matthew chapter 10, he said, go preach that the kingdom of God is nigh unto you and heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Notice what was put first, preach the gospel of the kingdom. And that's exactly what is said here. They went forth and they ministered the word and what happened? Well, the signs followed the word that was believed. Do you know that we have access to the word 24 hours a day, seven days a week? I would say over 90, 
percent of the world has access to the word of God in some form or another. Yes. So the most accessible way to receive healing is to just simply believe the word of God, to believe that when God says that by the stripes of Jesus you were healed, then that's the facts in your case. You know, consider this. If you go through, uh, do this sometime, it's, it's good study and it's a, really a faith builder for you. Go through the word and after the disciples received the outpouring of the Spirit, write, uh, just quantify or just write down how many people are recorded in the scriptures after Acts chapter 3 that actually received healing. Just see if you can count the number. You know, the number is a lot smaller than you would think. Okay? I was shocked when I th thought about it, too. And even in, uh, that are actually recorded. Now, I'm not saying there weren't many more that weren't recorded, but I'm just saying the point I'm trying to bring out is that there was a reason that they were recorded, and that reason was for our benefit today. Why do I say that? Go with me to John. John chapter 17. In John chapter 17, Jesus is praying for the disciples. And uh, let me read this. It's, this is so good. John 17. Let's just start in verse... Um, Uh, verse 14, I have given them thy word. The world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keepest them from the evil that is in the world. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Notice what Jesus is asking his father. He's praying unto his father. He's saying, look, set them apart from the world through your word. Your word is truth. Then what did he also tell them to do that we just read? To minister that word to other people. Why? Let's go on and read. He said, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctified myself that they might be sanctified through what? Through the truth. See, it's the truth of the word of God that we believe that sets us apart. Not just the truth of the word that we can parrot back to someone else, but it's what we believe that set, sets us apart. Sets us apart unto what? That's what the word sanctified means, is to be set apart. It sets us apart unto the spirit of God dwelling in us. And remember that if you walk in the Spirit, you're going to reap life after right, blah, 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 life everlasting. If you walk after the flesh, you're going to just reap corruption. Amen? Because we reap what we sow. That is a law that is still in effect today. Galatians 6, verse uh, 6 and 7, I think it is, where, uh, or it might be 7 and 8, where uh, Paul said, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that's what he's going to reap. He said, if you sow to the flesh, you're of the flesh going to reap corruption. But if you sow to the Spirit, you of the Spirit are going to reap life everlasting. Do you know that healing is part of your life everlasting that you possess? Amen. Listen to what he goes on to say. In verse 20, he said, Neither pray I for these, the disciples, alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Do you know that we are set apart through the word that the disciples preach to us? You'd say, wait a minute, no disciple preached to me. Yes, he did. Do you know what I'm reading to you? I'm reading about disciples and prophets they're speaking to us. And if we'll believe the word they're speaking to us, then that's going to produce the fruit of what? That word that is sown. Go with me to Luke. 
Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. This is the parable of the sower. And in Luke chapter 8, let's see, the clock. Listen to this. It says, Jesus is giving the interpretation of the parable. And he's, let's read it here. It says, um, verse 11 of Luke 8. He says, now, uh, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. In the other two accounts, it says, uh, and the one that is uh, sowing, the sower is the one who's sowing the word. So that would have been a disciple or Jesus or, you know, a prophet. They're sowing the word. He says, those by the wayside are they that hear when the de that that hear. But when the devil cometh, he taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should what? Believe and be saved. In other words, the enemy is going to try and rob the word because if you don't have the word, you have nothing to believe to be saved through or to believe and see the effect that it produces in your life. He said, they that are on the rock, uh, they on the rock are they which when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe, but, but uh, and in time of temptation fall away. That's like that man, that 20-year-old that received uh, the deliverance for his knee, was that, um, you know, he could have been this person who received the word, okay, and he had joy about it, but when he was being pressed by his peers around him in college or wherever he was, uh, he forsook, he let go of that word, but then when the minister came and told him the word again, that God wants you well, don't you think the Spirit of God dwelling in him bore witness to that? And whether he spoke with his mouth or not, his heart, which is what we believe with unto deliverance, uh, accepted what he said. And how do we know that? Because there was a change. We saw that the signs and the wonders and the miracles follow the, the word that is believed. Now, don't get in your mind that you got to know a scripture and a verse. Jesus saw so many miracles, and all he told them was, you know, that, hey, God wants you well. My father sent me to uh, set the captives free, to open the eyes of the blind. You know, that's all he told them was what the scripture said. And that simple thing, they said, well, I want that. And they believed to receive. It was just that simple. You know, I love this scripture. We talked about it uh, actually in our prayer uh, thing the last couple couple uh, lessons or times I was with you on True Stream. Go with me to Second Chronicles. This is making the same point. Uh, we talked about how Jehoshaphat was being challenged, and we saw an example of about how fear drove him to trust in God. It didn't drive him away from God. He, you know, like it says in Psalms. Uh, 56, David said, what times I'm afraid, I'm going to trust God because that's where my victory is. And this is what Jehoshaphat did. And he turned to the word of God and included himself in what the word of God said. And through that, he heard God sent uh, someone to tell him, hey, this is the victory that I have for you. And he believed what that man said. Now, this is how, this is how Jehoshaphat put it. In 2 Chronicles 20, verse 20, he says, And they rose early in the morning. In other words, he didn't lang uh, linger around saying, I wonder if this is working. No, he took God at his word. He got up early and he said, I want to see this victory that I have. And they rose up early in the morning and they went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, this was the king, and he said, hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God. So shall you be established. Believe his words, his prophets, 
so shall you prosper. Wow. See, Jehoshaphat's telling us, look, I believe the word that God sent me, and I believe the prophet who he spoke through, and we have this victory. Amen? Now, how different is this than, go back with me to Joshua, Joshua chapter 1. Verse 7 and 8, this is the exact same thing that our father ministered to Joshua. Now, you might say, well, he's getting it directly from God. Well, you know that the words I'm speaking to you are the words of God. And if you'll receive them, it will be as if you were receiving it directly from God. Why? Because Jesus said the words that we you know, captured here in dried ink on a piece of paper, they aren't what sets us free. The word that these, the Bible contains is spirit and life. It's not physical, it's spirit and life. So the words that I'm speaking unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And if you'll believe those words and you'll trust those words, then just like Jehoshaphat, you're going to prosper. You're going to receive what that word has promised. That's what Jehoshaphat did. He turned to the word in his fear, and what did he receive? The deliverance that the word said he would receive if he believed the word. Listen to what it says about Joshua in chapter uh, 1, verse 7. He says, He says, only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. See, God was pointing him to his word. He said, look, the answers that you're going to need are in my word, the word that Moses recorded for you. And then he goes on, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. Why? that thou mayest prosper wherever you go. Wow, wouldn't you like that spoken directly to you from God? Well, he's speaking it to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I'm telling you by the authority of the Spirit of God dwelling in me, that if you will, uh, verse 8, if you'll not let this book, these words that I'm speaking to you, depart out of your mouth, but if you will meditate in them day and night, and you'll cooperate or you'll do what they're saying to you, then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. See, I can speak that with 100% assurance because it's the truth of God's word. See, that's what Jehoshaphat was saying. He was saying, look, that's what the Word says. The Word cannot fail. Go with me to Isaiah 55. Listen to this. This is the words of Jehovah, the Father of Jesus Christ, the Creator of heaven and earth. This is what He is saying to you and me. Our Father, He's speaking this to you and me. Listen to what He says. I'm in Isaiah 55, verse 8. He says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. He's not excluding us from them. He's trying to include us. But he's saying right now, if you're just going with your own thoughts, they're not my thoughts. If you're just going with your flesh, fleshly ways, they're not my ways. But listen to what his ways are. He goes on to say, he says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Why? I taught a whole lesson on this, but why? Because God is a spirit, and the flesh profits nothing. If you want to think God's thoughts, you have to walk after the spirit. If you want to walk in God's ways, you have to walk in the spirit. And what will be the result of that? Well, listen. He says, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my what? My signs, my wonders, my miracles? Nope. 
He said, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. What did he send his word to do? Psalms 107 verse 20 says, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. But you might say, well, not all Israel was healed, and not all Israel was delivered from destruction. I agree 100%. That's what the word shows. Why didn't they? Because they didn't believe his word or his prophets who were speaking the word. See, God sent them the most accessible way to receive deliverance. And what was that? He sent a word to them. He said, look, believe this word and you'll have the deliverance that you desire. How easy is that? Do you know, I'll use myself as an example. You know, I, tr I when I was sick, I tried everything. I tried herbs. I went to the doctor and when I saw the fear on his face, I said, I couldn't trust him to take my trash out. You know, he, I'm not nothing against him. I'm just saying, I'm not going to put my life in the hands of someone who's afraid. That's just not smart, folks. Okay. And, and I tried uh, herbs and vitamins. I tried diet and nutrition. None of that worked. In fact, well, it, the cancer loved it. it. It would just thrived on all, everything I was, all the health food. It was like, whoa, man, we're going to get big now. And that's exactly what happened. But anyway, uh, joking aside, um, I tried all those things, okay? I went to, um, who was it? Uh, Benny Hinn was in Phoenix. I went to the Benny Hinn thing. I didn't get well. I didn't get better. I went to my pastor who had seen miracles and signs and wonders, and I didn't receive deliverance. And since that time, uh, you know, I, let me just jump ahead. And since that time, I've been to many other conferences and seen many sick people, and not all of them get well. The ministers up there speaking over them, commanding, rebuking, the prayer ministers are laying hands on, but the person walks away sick. Why? Why? There's only one answer to that. I know a lot of people's elbows are going to be hurting right now, but the truth is, we just read it. If you believe, you receive. That's what set me free. Matthew 21, verse 22, I've shared this, let's see, 1,487 times. Uh, in you know on this platform, and this will be 1,488 times. Uh, but listen carefully. You know, here I was, sick and dying, had a lot of people pray for me, rub all the hair off my forehead. See how thick it is in the back here? People just seem to put their hand right here, you know, and it just wore it off. Anyway, so uh, I read a scripture, Matthew 21, 22, for the zillionth time, and it says, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believing you receive. And I read that verse backwards. I read it like this. If you have received, you have believed. Folks, I was just honest with myself that day before, before myself and before God. And I said, you know, Father, I haven't received. And your word is truth. So that means I haven't believed. And instead of feeling condemned, instead of feeling separated, I felt more accepted than I had in eight years. Why? Because I spoke the truth. And the spirit in me was bearing witness to the truth that I really had not believed. It wasn't condemning me. The spirit of God will never condemn you. There is no condemnation to those that are in Christ. So the spirit cannot condemn you. If you're feeling condemned or guilt, that's the devil. But in that moment, I felt the peace of God in the sense that my heart was confirming what I spoke out of my mouth. The Spirit of God dwelling in me was confirming that I had not believed. And I had to agree. The evidence was overwhelming. Okay? The Bible says if you believe, you do receive. 
uh, Mark 11. Listen to what Mark 11 says. Uh, it's a parallel account to what I just read, but Mark 11, chapter, Mark, I mean, uh, verse 23. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not, what? Doubt in his heart. That's unbelief. See, you can't have the unbelief and see anything. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall what? Believe those things that he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. And what's the conclusion? Jesus said, therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. See, so there has to be some belief of that word in order to receive the healing. That's why I said the most accessible way to receive healing is to just simply believe the word of God. Do you know that you could go and there's no guarantee in this, but you could, you could chase every healing ministry around the world and there's no guarantee by them laying hands on you that you will be made whole. Again, I'm going to go back to those ministers. You know, I've... I've listened to many of those ministers that say, you don't need to believe, I can believe for you. And I'm going to make this point again. They do not see 100% success rate. Why? Because they're missing this one simple truth, is that there has to be some belief on the part of the person receiving. Some mustard seed size, that's it. And they can receive. That's the only answer that is 100% across every person. That's why we can say with such assurance that the simplest, the most accessible way is to just to simply believe the God's word. Do you know when those ministers that do receive results, you know, uh, minister to people, they don't just say, they don't tell them nothing. They say, God wants you well. Just accept what I'm going to minister over you. You know, that's belief. I mean, if they believe that, that's the word of God being preached. That's the good news. God wants you well. God is ministering his, uh, ministering healing through me. It says that as a believer, I'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. If a person will believe that, they'll be well. It doesn't matter what they were thinking 20 minutes before or their whole life before. But what will they believe in that moment? See, that's what makes the difference. And that's why believing what the Word says will save you a lot of airfare. It'll also save you a lot of frustration. I'll tell you what, folks, I've ministered to thousands of people, and I've talked to, I mean, countless of those people that have done that. They've gone to all the ministers. They've had the hands laid on. I mean, big names. And they're still in the same condition. So what does God give me in that moment? Well, he gives me a word. He doesn't say, well, give it a shot, Mike. You got the power. Let's see if it works. He's never told me that one time. Never. Okay? But what he has done is he's always given me a word. His truth to minister to that person. And he's giving them another opportunity to just accept that truth. Do you know how simple it is? Think about this in uh, John chapter 5. Uh, I've also got a whole teaching on this. It's, it's, an, I, it's an awesome teaching. It's called, um, Will You Be Made Whole? Jesus went uh, to the pool of Bethesda that was covered with six, sick people all over. They're all waiting for the water to be stirred. And our father sent him to the one person who had given up on getting to the pool. In fact, he says to the man, will you be made whole? And the man said to Jesus, he said, you know, he said, I don't have anybody to help me. I've been here for 38 years. I have nobody to help me. Nobody to help me get into the pool. I can't get to the pool. But then Jesus did this. Jesus said, stand up right. Take up your mat and leave. What did the man do? Did he say, hey, what are you, deaf? Didn't I just tell you I have nobody to get me to the pool? No. 
He just acted in belief on what Jesus said. He stood up. He didn't say, well, if I could stand up, I'd get myself to the pool. None of those replies. He just stood up. That's belief. See, when you read the word and it says by Jesus stripes, you were healed and you see yourself as a you. The moment you see yourself as a you, then you'll receive healing. See, it's, it's not God is not waiting for us. It's the power is in the word. Jesus said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Simple as that. You know, uh, so many people uh, go to ministers. Why? Because they've heard that good things have happened through that ministry. Okay? Now, is that enough for them to be healed? No. They might just have hope that they would be included in that. But it's the prayer of faith that saves the sick. Whose prayer? It could be my prayer, but they have to be believing in that word that is spoken for it to be of benefit to them. Amen? Folks, if, if you're like I was, where you've been, uh, you're still in the same situation you were for many years, and you're seeing no, no difference at all or no change at all, uh, let me just save you some time and aggravation and frustration. Quit looking for your answer out here somewhere. It's not out there. If it was, I'm certain that you would have already found it. But where is it? It's in the Word, right before your eyes. Just I'm, I'm admonishing you like Jehoshaphat did. He said, believe the Lord. Believe His prophets. Why did he say that? Because he said, then you'll prosper. Then you'll have good success. Okay? Uh, again, back to uh, 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 Mark uh, 16, verse 20. It says, and the Lord went with, with them. Uh, the Lord went, uh, the, the, I'm going to have to read it. I'm a, a little tongue twice. I'm a little tongue twied here. Uh, tongue twied. Uh, it says right here. <laughs> Silly rabbit. It says, and they went forth and preached everywhere. Uh, the word working with them and confirming the word with signs following. See, the Lord went working with and confirming the word with signs following. That's what he did. Confirmed the word with signs following. L wait, listen to this. This is good. Um, Psalms 119. My favorite psalm. Psalms 119. Listen carefully. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Pretty powerful, huh? Listen to these words. Proverbs chapter 4. These verses are the verses that move my heart uh, to a place of confidence that allowed uh, the Spirit of God to be released to manifest healing in my life. And why? Because I finally believed these words. Listen to what it says. It says, my son or my daughter, give attention to the words my words, the word of God, not what the doctor said, not what the medical report says, not what your body is speaking to you, not what your friend told you, but his word. What is his word saying? That's what you need to find out. It says, uh, where is it? My son, give attention to my word. Stretch out your ear to hear my sayings, not what everyone else is saying about your your circumstance, but what he is saying. He goes on to say, let them not depart from thine eyes. Don't take your focus off of what the word of God is saying to you. That's what I began to see. Wait a minute. I keep switching back to my body. 
What the word? Then my body, word, body, word, body. I'm just dizzy from looking back and forth. But he said, don't look that way. Just look to my word. And what does it say? Keep that word that you're looking at in your heart. What does keep mean? It means to guard it. Don't let go of it. In other words, hold on to it, protect it at all costs. And then listen to this. Why do we do that? For those words are life to those that find them. Finding not because they're hid from us, but because they're hidden for us. And it goes on to say, and those when you receive them, they'll be health to all your flesh. Folks, that is the most accessible way to receive your healing, is to embrace what the Word of God is saying. To say, hey, like that man I told you about with the deaf ear, I do believe that that Word includes me. And before the minister even touched him, his ear was open. That's how simple it is. 20 years of failure this man went through. But when he heard the word and believed the word, what happened? He received his healing. The word assured him that he was included in that healing. And he was made whole. Amen? Wow. Well, folks, that's all I have for today. And praise God, I encourage you to go back over this. Uh, it'll be a blessing to you. Uh, and um, and uh, I think that's it for today. I don't uh, have anything else for you, but I'm just, I agree with you that our Father is sending the word to you. He sent his word and healed them. I encourage you to receive that word and embrace it. Let go of your senses. Go back over Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. See, incline your ears, give attention to his word. Don't take your eyes off of it. And you'll see the life that he's hidden for you in that word. And that, when received, will be health to all your flesh. Amen? Well, God bless you. Have an awesome rest of your, your day. And I'll uh, see you next Thursday. Bye-bye now.